Hello, uh, my name is Cynthia and I'm gonna be walking you through my very, very extensive skincare routine because I love skincare. Um, and my makeup look today is gonna be called All Browns and you'll see why. Here we go. First step, cleanser, always. I have combination skin um, and it dep really depends on the time of the month, to be honest. I also use um, Exfoliator afterwards. This one's by Sanitas. It's a lemon cream scrub. So it's kind of like a pudding for your face. Is that a thing? This is Bioderma. It's like an old school toner that a lot of people use, but I love it because it um, you can use it after makeup as well, but you can use it after washing your face and it cleans anything extra and you don't need very much, just a little bit. These also are the only cotton pads I use. They're Shiseido, they're the best. It's like putting silk on your skin. When you're on set, you're wearing makeup a lot and you have to take it off and put it on and take it off. So your skin gets a lot of wear and tear. It's like a calming um, toner. And you're thinking, why does she have so much to do for her face? And does she have that much time in the world? I don't, I make it. But the reason why I have so much to do is because I was on a film a while ago and somehow, I don't know what I did, it's like I used the wrong products on my skin and ended up giving myself like a minor skin burn. And I remember thinking, what am I gonna do? And I spotted this incredible person online. She said, just use Cetaphil and Aquaphor. That was the only thing I could use on my skin. And then after that, she said to reintroduce things that would hydrate my skin and take care of it from the inside out. And so that's what I started doing. I started just sort of discovering what works, what didn't work. And it's changed over time, um, as you do, because you're supposed to um, just change the things you use so your face doesn't get too used to everything. Um, oh, and I'm opening up a skin mask now by Talika. It's anti-aging. It's not that I think I'm getting older, it's just that this has everything. You know, honestly, sometimes I get asked, how do I function with nails? The question is, how would I function without them, to be honest? This is the new face. It's like a microcurrent. It comes with like a hydrating serum. I take it down to about three. This is a vitamin C, Urban Skin RX. Really, really amazing. It's specifically made for darker skin tones like mine. I usually just do about that much. And last thing, Be Hydra by Drink Elephant it goes a long, long way. Skincare and and the love of it and the routine sort of came a, a lot later for me, maybe when I was like in my late 20s, to be honest. It's like growing up helped me like figure out what to do with my skin. Nourish Max, which I really, really like. This is just um, eye cream. This is uh, my moisturizer, Force de Vie. It's like an oxygen cream. As you can see, it's already like running out because I love it. Then we use, as you all should use, sunscreen. Uh, this one is black girl sunscreen and it's really, very really much made for black girls like me. The African beauty tradition is holistic. So it's not just the face, it's the entire body. Um, so you take care of everything, which I do also. So you just do see me do all the moisturizing before. It takes me a long time to get ready in the morning, but I like it, it's me time. My mom, her specific thing was make sure that when she was doing her makeup, she would always use an eyeliner, always eyeliner. She used to take off her eyebrows and fill them in with her eye pencil. It was crazy, but it works for her. And I've never thought, oh, this looks odd. It looked really, really cool, which is probably why I now bleach mine. I don't really have eyebrows. But it was always about um, 
the main thing was cleansing. So making sure that you use products that would cleanse. There's obviously a black soap, which is used often. I sometimes put this over everything. So I'm gonna do it today. It's really nice. Everything's sort of like locked into the skin. That's SK2, it's like a skin essence. Can I just tap it in? We're gonna do um, a look that I call all grounds. And I start with my foundation, uh, which is Dior. And I mix them because I have a weird sort of undertone, which is like a gold, orange, yellow thing. That's pretty close. the beauty industry really didn't have very much for darker skin tones. And over um, the years, I've been lucky enough to watch as that changed. So we're starting to see more brands and the range of skin tones is sort of opening up, which is really lovely. But I've definitely experienced some um, interesting moments when I've been on a set or um, I remember I was doing this like charity gala thing. And uh, we had to be made up. Um, and when I went to sit at this uh, makeup artist's table, she she said I didn't need any makeup. And I asked her um, if she had m my shades. Um, and she had to admit that she didn't bring any of my shades at all. She didn't bring any shades for darker skin tones at all. She had only skin tone or shades for, for lighter skin tones. And I just remember feeling really sort of forgotten about. It was a really big event. So essentially I did my makeup by myself. And that's, that's never a fun thing to have to like deal with. This is just uh, a NARS um, concealer. And it took me a while uh, to start trusting that people would have my my makeup with them. So I would always bring everything with me, just in case. This is like a finish powder. I always like to put some because it sort of brings everything together before I put on any of um, the contouring powders because I don't necessarily contour that much. I just sort of enhance. When I do my makeup, I don't really want to look like I'm wearing that much. It's sort of like, I work up like this. This is how I look every single day. Fenty Beauty. It's like a bronzer, but it's an everything. And so I use it for my eyes and for my cheeks. Look at the color, look at that. Chocolate and all good things together. It still feels really bold, but essentially all I'm doing is using the different shades of brown to bring everything out. I'll mix and match these two here. This one right here. And sometimes I'll push into the nose. That sort of brings everything out, which I really like. The one thing I've learned is that anyone who is creative is always there at their best when they're allowed to do what they want to do. I think any kind of artistic expression is a form of play for me. It's, it's a way for me to tell you the type of person I am, tell you who I am. Just going back to this, to just tidy. I kind of enjoy uh, playing with all of that. I like to highlight my eyes. They're big eyes, so I go for them. It's lashes, it's eyelashes, the whole lot. Um, I have, I like the shape of my lips, so I go for my lips, lip liner, the bright lips, and stuff like lip color. Um, and then I always will try and bring out my cheekbones because they're they're a nice set of cheekbones, so I I bring them out wherever you can enhance and show. I, that's that's what I do. This is not necessarily an eyeliner. This is a lip liner but it's a really cool color, it's chestnut, so it's sort of like a reddish brown, so I use this a lot. Dior. This is Boy Brow by Glossier, and it's blonde. I dyed my brows because my sister suggested it. Um, I went blonde a while ago. The first time I did it, I went sort of skin tone. And that was, I think, for the Met, one of the Met galas. Um, 
And then I just was like, let's just try it. Let's just go blonde if we need to. What have I got to lose? And I felt really good about it. I think people should be less cautious about their brows. I mean, they're, they're part of your expression, but why not have fun? I think I, I approach most things as a you only live once kind of thing. So uh, yes, I'm using this, Dior. I think wherever we can, we should play. I think it's why, you know, I have piercings and my hair's blonde and I dye my eyebrows. Cause I just, I wanna see. I wanna see what it looks like. I wanna see whether it works. If it doesn't, it'll grow again. It's never really the end of the world, you know? I start with this and end with this. When I'm getting into character, it's like watching the makeup go on. And then once the costume and the makeup is together, it feels like that transformation is complete. When I, I played a character called Holly Gibney in a series called The Outsider, and her look was very much like all muted brows. Once those things were all together, it felt like she appeared, she came back. And you can tell that I use this palette a lot. And the last thing I'm gonna do on my lips. I have two chestnut pencils. One for the eye, one for the lip. And I try to choose colors that feel like they just enhance them there. And obviously when I smile, you see this big gap here. Um, and I've had people ask me to close it before, but I realized that part of my character, part of who I am, um, and part of the way you see me when I smile is in that gap. Um, and there are so many people with a gap and there are so many young girls who have been told they should change it because it doesn't look great and they, but actually I think a smile that, isn't, that has a gap in it already is perfect. I wouldn't change it. So I have never wanted to change it. I never will change it. And I don't shy away from people looking at my mouth. So if you have a gap out there, enjoy it. <laughs> It literally is the brownest of browns. And I, I use different colors all at once, so I'll do this first. MAC again, and that's more matte. And it probably won't get very matte because um, the lip I put on was a satin finish. Sometimes I'll tap in the middle with something that's lighter. It's Lady Be Good. the subtlest difference. Do we want to use a gloss? I mean, we're here, we might as well. Glossy has a really cool one, it's just glossy, and it's, it's clear, nothing else. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Uh, it meant a lot, and I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you get a couple of your own little hints and tricks and tips that can work with you. Lots of love. Bye.